Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone's doing well with all this craziness going on. And as you probably saw from the title, I have purchased a new vehicle and you can see it here behind me. It's a 2020 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Willys Edition. So down the road, we'll get into more of what the Willys Edition is and what the options are on it. But today I wanna to focus on a few other things. And first and foremost, why did I decide to get a new vehicle um, why did I get a Jeep? And then I want to talk a little bit about my first impressions, uh, how the Jeep compares to the Crosstrek and what I'm finding the Jeep does better and what I'm finding that the Crosstrek did better and some of the things I may miss with the Crosstrek. So let's get started with all that. Thanks for watching. So for those of you who are new to the channel and this is your first video, I've actually owned a Subaru since 2011. I had an STI and then I moved into a 2014 Crosstrek. And then when the 18s came out uh, on the new global platform, I actually moved into an 18. And the 18 has been a fantastic car for me. I've really had no real issues with it other than a few quirky suspension problems that uh, are part of the reason why six or eight months ago, I actually started looking at other vehicles. But I'm a huge Subaru fan. I will continue to be a Subaru fan. And for those of you uh, who are new subscribers and you have any questions about the mods I've done or just if you need any help with anything, I'm still gonna be here to answer Crosstrek questions. And the good news is the car is actually staying in the family. So we, uh, my wife and I have decided that we're gonna let my son use the car. Um, he's going off to college in Illinois starting in August. So it'll be good for him to have a, you know, a maintenance-free, basically trouble-free vehicle. It only has 18,000 miles on it and three more years of free maintenance. So we figured we'll give him a shot. <laughs> if he takes care of it, we're gonna let him keep it. Get him started on the right foot. Um, it's a phenomenal vehicle. It's all modded up. It'll be a great car. So the good news is I'll still be able to do some videos with the Crosstrek. Um, not sure if he's gonna take it this semester or not up there, but um, it is gonna be around. So still a Subaru fan, and I'm happy to answer any questions about all that stuff. With all of that said, let's talk about the reasons why I ended up getting a new vehicle. <clears throat> so first and foremost, about six or eight months ago, Subaru started having a bunch of recalls. I had the quirky suspension issues that we talked about, the sway bar bolts coming loose, and then I had the weird strut noise on the uh, driver's side. So I was getting a little bit frustrated and started looking down the line and thinking, okay, what would I get to replace this car that could still be a comfortable, good daily driver, but would actually allow me to go further off-road, safer off-road, and uh, kind of worry-free off-road. The Subaru in stock form is capable and can do a lot of things. You throw wheels and tires on it, it makes it even more capable and safer off-road. However, it's all wheel drive, it's not a four wheel drive, it's never going to be a four wheel drive, it's not designed to be that. So it's excellent for certain things, but I found myself wanting to be able to go a little bit further off road. I'm not interested in rock crawling or doing anything crazy like that, but I just want something that's a little bit more purpose built um, that is still comfortable every day. And there are basically two vehicles that came in my radar. And the first one was a 4Runner. They make a nice off-road edition. I've had a 4Runner in the past and it was an excellent vehicle. We put over 150,000 miles on that thing. The second vehicle was a Jeep. I've had a 2005 Rubicon, had that for three or four years and ended up getting rid of that because it was, at the time they didn't make the four-door, my son was young. Getting him in and out of the car seat was kind of a pain. And it was just a difficult vehicle to live with on a daily basis. Um, back then, the tailgate didn't even lock out when you would open it. So for me, trying to get my bike in and out of the back, if you're on any kind of an incline, that door, big heavy door would slam you. <laughs> so that was no fun. So Jamie, who is a subscriber to the channel and uh, kind of known him now for a while through uh, YouTube, suggested to me a while back to check out the new Jeeps, that they had really improved their kind of everyday livability and their on-road on manners. Recently, with everything going on, they were doing employee pricing through Jeep, so I thought, what the heck, I went and drove one, and Jamie was at, uh, ac actually very correct. They are so much better than what I used to have. Comfortable, 
nice interior, excellent technology, great AC. Um, I could go on and on about it and we'll do that in a little bit. But I actually kind of fell in love with it and, and, and the idea of being able to do the more off-road stuff that I used to be able to do. So that's kind of the main reasons why I ended up going for a Jeep. It's not that I hate the Crosstrek. It's not that I fell out of love with the Crosstrek. I just kind of ready for something new and something that would allow me to go further and to do more things. Like I mentioned earlier, the Subaru is still going to be around, so I will do some videos with it and I will steal it from my son from time to time and uh, drive that around. A couple of the other things that kind of led us in this direction, uh, a while back we were thinking about getting a Commander, which is kind of like a Razor, but not quite as you know sporty. And those things, the, the prices on them are ridiculous. Uh, you know, you're looking at 25 to 30,000 easily with just a few mods. And to spend that kind of money on something you're only gonna drive, you know, maybe once a week, didn't seem very smart. So the Jeep will allow me to have something I can play with. And then actually as a family, we can go do st take the top off, take the doors off and go do whatever we wanna do. So uh, seemed like a good compromise. So those are basically the reasons why I decided to go with the Jeep and move away from the cross track. I've had the car now just for about a week and I've got a little over 300 miles on it, including some freeway time. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what I find the Jeep is better at than the cross track and what I'm missing a little bit about the cross track and what the cross track was better at, uh, at least in my opinion. So let's talk about that stuff. And I wrote some things down and I'm going to refer to my notes here just so I don't forget anything. Let's start with the, the, the positives of the Crosstrek. The big one I think that's pretty obvious is miles per gallon. The Crosstrek does for me was 26 to 30 depending on how I drove it, if I was towing, whatever, doing off-road stuff. And the Jeep is basically 20 to 22. Um, they're saying 20 combined. I'm at about 19 right now. So we'll see how that goes. I'm expecting it to not be much better than 20 even if uh, you do grandma driving. <laughs> so that's going to be take a little bit of getting used to. At least gas prices are a little bit cheaper right now. So we'll see how that goes. Handling is another one. Not that the Crosstrek is a, you know, Canyon Carver or anything like that, but Subaru has nice steering feel. And even though the Crosstrek sits up a little bit, and even with the springs I have on it, it still can be a fun vehicle and it handles nice. Um, it's very steady and straight on the freeway. Um, it's kind of a no-nonsense, easy-to-drive vehicle, so I like that about, about that. I do miss having the ability to put my bike on top of the car. I'm having to use my old hitch bike rack, which I don't like as well. And in fact, because of the spare tire on the back, there's a lever on my bike rack that allows the, it to fold out. I can't do that because the tire's in the way. So i got to figure something else for that. One of my favorite mods on the Crosstrek was actually the Touch to open a touch to lock that the limited had in 2018 and i do it's something that was one of my favorite options actually and the other thing that the cross trick you could do with the with the i think it was just the limited but i don't i'm not going to swear to that was you could put in the code in the back if you don't have your key with you you can open the uh, the hatchback with your code and then you could deactivate your key fob put it in the car and then lock your keys in the car go surfing go swimming whatever you'd like to do come back, use your code to get in and get your key. So that's a nice feature. I would use it now and then when I was lazy and I forgot my keys and I just need to get something out of the car. Those are kind of the main things so far that have been hitting me as far as things that the Crosstrek does better or that I might miss. Um, as far as the Jeep goes, one of the things that probably the biggest thing that surprised me was I think the Jeep is actually quieter around town as far as tire noise goes. Um, it may be because these tires, which are pretty off-road worthy, are new, but those methods and the BFGs really produce a lot of noise. So I was actually, like I said, I was surprised that the uh, Jeep was a little bit quieter on-road. When you get on the freeway and you're at speed, I think the Jeep's a little bit louder just because of the wind noise. You're basically putting a brick through the air, <laughs> so there's no aerodynamics at all with this thing. But uh, overall, I think they're pretty comparable noise-wise, but uh, I, I was a little bit surprised by the, the tire noise. The, the obvious one is the off-road ability of the Jeep. We don't even need to talk about that. You know, just having four-wheel drive, um, extra clearance. This has almost 10 inches of ground clearance stock, so that's nice. 
Uh, one of the big obvious things that's definitely better with this vehicle is the AC system. Um, we've had many discussions about the AC and the Crosstrack. While it is adequate and does work, um, I know some of you don't have real issues with it. In Arizona, when it's 100 to 110 um, and you're driving stoplight to stoplight, it can get kind of frustrating because when you accelerate, it robs the AC power. So on the freeway, it's fine, even when it's super hot because it's nice, nice and steady. But around town, the Crosstrack AC is so-so. Whereas this guy, it cools down really quickly and I haven't had any issues at all with it so far. It's been excellent. So I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, the Jeep also has more power. It's a V6, has 285 horse and uh, 260 foot-pounds of torque. It is about 1,300 pounds heavier than the Crosstrek, but it still gets up and goes, no problem. Um, though I will say, and you guys have heard me say it before, I find the 18 to be adequate power-wise. Um, it's better than the 14 was. At least it feels like it is, even though it was only four horsepower. I want to mention the transmission as well. This has an eight-speed transmission, whereas you know, the Crosstrek has a CVT, which again, I like the CVT. I had no issues with it whatsoever, but I'm very impressed with this eight-speed. It's uh, very smooth very responsive and kind of uh, unobtrusive. It's, it reminds me of a CVT a little bit. Obviously you feel it shifting a little bit more, especially when you get on it to accelerate, but it's a very smooth transmission. And I think that's one of the reasons you get a little bit better mileage with these guys versus what I used to get in my Rubicon was 15 or 16 miles per gallon pretty much everywhere. A lot of that had to do with the, four, the 411s or 410s, whatever they were in the rear end. This has 345s, I believe. Sorry if that's not right. I'll put it on the screen if it's wrong. One of the other things that's I think is a little bit better in here is actually the technology. The screen in the Crosstrek is maybe a little bit bigger. This is a seven inch screen. It's an upgraded screen from the standard one. And they offer, they also offer, I think it's an eight inch screen, but the screen itself is almost like an iPhone. It's very responsive. Um, there's a few other things you can do with it as far as moving apps around. Uh, the CarPlay works. As soon as you plug it into your phone, it's like it kicks on, which with the Crosstrek was one of the biggest issues I had. It was a big pain. And um, I know the head units cause all kinds of heartache for people. And um, so I don't know if that's gotten better with the 2020. I haven't been driving any of those, but with the 18, that was definitely a problem. Another thing that I find is, is a little bit better in the Jeep is actually driving position. You're up a little bit higher um, as far as visibility it's on par with or better than the Crosstrek which is actually surprising because I think the Crosstrek's visibility all around the car is one of the best so for this to be as good or better was a little bit of a surprise but it's excellent and again I like being up a little bit higher towing capacity is 3,500 pounds versus 1,500 in the Crosstrek this guy has remote start and it actually came with a tow package on it which gives both plugins in the back and it also has with that uh, stronger alternator, uh, better battery, and then it has four auxiliary switches built into the vehicle so it's easier to add accessories, you know, different lights and things like that. Um, came with the tow package, which is super nice. Anyway, so that's basically, that's, the, that's kind of the list I came up with so far, and I'm sure that will kind of change as I get used to it or find out other things that maybe I don't like about the Jeep as well, but I thought I would share those with you since I just got into the Jeep and kind of related to the Crosstrek a little bit. For the most part, that's kind of what I wanted to cover in this video. I'm hoping to get a bunch of videos out here. It's just been crazy. I've been working on the shop. I've been building some epoxy tables. I finished one for my, that I made for my mom and I'm working on a second one that's almost done and just trying to get some different furniture built in here. And I'll have another shop update soon. But uh, if there's anything you guys want to know about the Jeep, or you want to hear some other comparisons or opinions about between the two vehicles, leave it in the comments or let me know. And I'm hoping to get out and do some off-roading soon. And I'm also going to try out the Luno Life mattress back here. Uh, probably won't need to use the, the little pods for the top of the bed that goes between the seats, but I'm going to try it out. It might work well. And speaking of that, I've had a few people comment that Luno Life hasn't had any mattresses in stock, and that's because they've been working on the Luno Life 2.0 which is actually available as of May 15th. And the Hutton 15 code still works. So if you're interested in getting a Luno Life mattress, you can still do that. 
I know people have asked me about it and have been waiting for the new one to come out. So um, I think they're taking pre-orders now, so you should be able to uh, get in on that deal. It's the same price as the old one, but it's uh, apparently a better material and they made a few other modifications to it that you can find out about at lunalife.com. So if you're interested, check that out. And I'll leave the coupon code below too. Again, that's going to do it. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys and we will talk to you soon.